Hello guys and gals and welcome. Today we're going to be going over something that, well, was kind of a whirlwind over the past couple days. And uh, I spent probably about, I think, close to 30 hours on this with, uh, you know, in combination with obviously the community. And um, we were able to put together some very interesting information. So for those of you who may be wondering what the hell went on over the past couple days, what these orange numbers mean, uh, where it all came from, how we figured everything out, well, buckle up because that's what we're going to go over right now. We're going to start from the beginning and I'm going to go over everything step by step so that you understand what we went through and um, get a better idea of what we ended up with. So first off on the list is the patch notes. Um, so we can't start anywhere except for in the patch notes. Um, if you followed my patch notes video, you'll know that I read over all the patch notes whenever everything, we always dig deep into these patch notes. And there's a reason why we dig deep into the patch notes because there are hidden things in here. Um, you know, whether it be hidden on purpose or accidentally, um, a lot of the times you will go over the patch notes and find things that you didn't otherwise normally expect. And um, at the bottom of the patch notes was some very cryptic, cryptic information. Um, they basically said, P.S. We were flipping through the old Diablo 2 manual and found this confounding inscription. What does it all mean? Now, uh, the picture on its surface uh, seemed to be rather innocuous, but obviously there was a code here. Now, I had originally intended to break this code at some point and have some fun playing around with the secret, but it seemed like the community at large was very excited about this, and very shortly thereafter, someone had already broken the code uh, using a cipher key, uh, which they used the word resurrected to be the cipher. Um, I can go over exactly how they did that. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. Uh, this is a website that is used specifically to break codes, and they had basically typed in the message that was, of course, on the book into the code uh, using the uh, decryption key slash password of Resurrected. Um, it ended up being a uh, vig Viganeer, I can't even pronounce that, cipher. And um, the problem was is that it didn't give us a solution. Um, the cipher, which once completed, led us to an, a question. The question was so many gems, why, what, what do the orange numbers mean? What do the orange numbers mean? Um, and this was a question and many people didn't know the answer to this question. We, we didn't understand what they meant. Um, there were a lot of, uh, speculation that went around for a very long period of time. We speculated that it was crafted items. We speculated that it could possibly be a Haraja cube recipe due to the picture of the image. Um, but eventually we managed to come across, um, someone who had managed to obtain a orange number, um, by clicking the chat gem. Um, the first one that appeared was actually 11 months ago. This was not something that was recent. Um, so the numbers apparently had been appearing for a very long time. Um, this had led us strictly to believe that the numbers were not a new phenomenon that was included with the patch and that the, that the message was not necessarily meant to tell us about something that they had just added into the game, but was instead there to tell us about something that we had missed. Um, very quickly, uh, a lot of people around the internet had decided to try and figure out what the orange numbers meant. Um, we started to collect them and before too long, we had 14, 15, we had up to 32 orange numbers. Um, I had originally postulated that it could possibly be a book cipher or a, an Ottendorf cipher. If you guys have ever heard of an Ottendorf cipher, um, an Ottendorf cipher is a very interesting thing. Um, you can obviously uh, just look it up on the internet. If you were to type in uh, Ottendorf cipher or book cipher into uh, Google, you would very quickly come up with a Wikipedia article, um, which goes over the cipher. And um, to quickly explain what an Ottendorf cipher is, um, let me bring up the page so that you guys can see it. So this is the Wikipedia article on the book cipher or the Ottendorf cipher. Um, basically what it is, is the person will encrypt a message. Um, the encrypted message uses words from the book. 
However, the numbers don't necessarily mean anything unless you have the correct book. Um, so Ottendorf ciphers are actually notoriously difficult to actually you know, translate, uh, specifically because they have to have the correct book. Not only does it have to be the correct book, it has to be the exact correct book, the correct revision number. Um, for instance, even if you were to use something like the Bible, um, it would have to be the exact same version of the Bible. It would have to be the King James Bible, or it would have to be the, the uh, New International Version. Um, and the both of the books that are being used to usually transfer these codes have to be the exact same version. Even so much as a one page being different can mess up the entire cipher. Um, and the reason why I knew that it was an Ottendorf cipher is because in the patch notes, they specifically gave us a book. They didn't just give us a message. They literally sent us this little thing and they were like, they were like, oh, hey, by the way, we found a copy, uh, you know, of the manual. We were flipping through the old Diablo 2 manual. Well, what happens when you click on the Diablo 2 manual icon? It takes you to a list to download the Diablo 2 manual. So basically what they were doing in a nutshell was they gave us the book. So they told us that the numbers were there. Um, and then it also gave us the book so that we would know which book to use in the Ottendorf cipher. And that was essentially the key that sort of unlocked everything. Um, after a little while, we were able to figure out exactly how to use the Ottendorf cipher in its relative form. And we were able to put together a Google Documents. Now, the Google Document will be linked in the description if you guys want to take a look at it. Um, it is right here. Uh, this is the Google Documents. And uh, let me go ahead and full screen this so we can get a nice good view. And uh, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger too, because why not? Um, so in here we have some of our source material and also links to some of the discords that we're using. Uh, this is a big community effort. I want to stress this. Um, it is not something that I achieved on my own. We definitely achieved this as a, as a community. Um, down here at the bottom, you will find some uh, some tabs. Uh, one of them is the Cypher tab. This is where all of the original work took place, um, where we would figure out how things worked within the book. Now, you might be asking, well, well how the hell does the Cypher work? Um, well, I'm going to bring that up, too, and we're going to talk about it. So let's take one of the codes, and I'm going to show you how the code works. So right here, uh, we have a code. This is number seven. Um, actually, you know, let's find a, a good one, right? So uh, let's get something like that's a really good word, like... Uh, secrets. That sounds good. Like number 55. So number 55 secrets is 0555053412. Now you see we have it broken up into segments. And the reason why we have it broken up into segments is because it is the position in the paragraph. So 055 is the position of the word in the paragraph. Um, 50 is the page number that it is available on. 34 is the line number, and we also have 12, which is the word number. So to do this, we have to open up the actual manual, uh, which, of course, we also have open. We've had open for a very long period of time. Uh, we spent a very long time uh, looking at this manual, studying it, trying to figure out exactly what it was that the manual uh, represented in, in all of its glory. And... Um, Let's bring the manual up as well. And here is the manual right here. Um, so let's run this particular puzzle in the manual. Um, so to do this, we need to go to the particular page. So the page was page 50, line 34, row 12. All right. So this is the actual page number written at the bottom. All right. So page 50. Here we go, page 50, line 34, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. It's 34, right? I'm totally uh, drawing a blank here. I've, I've always been this way. I'll look straight at something. All right, and then it's number 12 on 34. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we end up with the word 
Secrets. Secrets is um, in the book in this particular position, and we've also noticed that each one of the codes would have a corresponding code um, that was the same for each particular word. This also helped us to understand better um, how the codes were working. Like, for instance, the code the was always 370101 despite the fact that it would change position. So it was 044 here, but then uh, it is also 058 here at 370101, which means that it is also the in that position. Um, eventually we did end up with 98.5% of the entire code finished, and I would like to call out the missing numbers that we are currently still searching for. So we are currently still searching for number 26, Number 96, 92, 104, 277, 385, 456, 496, 625, and 655. Very few numbers left, um, and we would like to get our hands on these to confirm their actual, you know, real meaning. Now we have inferred some of the meanings. Um, anytime you see it is written in red, for instance, like when I typed in the here, um, or I typed in broken or form, um, these are things that we guessed, essentially. So we, we guessed whether they were correct or not. Um, and unfortunately for some of the things we had to because we didn't have the codes. But once we got the codes, a lot of them actually got confirmed as correct uh, because we were able to infer the meaning. Now we ended up with this kind of like jumbled mess, no punctuation, no sentences, no, um, you know, no, no like grammar. Um, and eventually we did compile it into a more decoded form. Uh, which is basically with all of the sort of grammar and everything inferred because it didn't exactly tell us what the grammar was. Uh, so we're going to go over this right now and we're going to talk about um, what it could potentially mean. So the first thing we're going to do is read it. And then um, once we have read it, uh, you know, completely, then we're going to kind of talk about it and see what it could potentially mean. Now, um, I am going to put a call out to the community as well here uh, that... Um, you know, we might not exactly know what everything means, and we would like for you guys to uh, to help us discern this. Um, you know, I'm going to explain everything as best I can, and then you guys can uh, jump in and fill in the gaps uh, as much as you can. So let's start with uh, line one. The stones have spoken to me again, showing visions that only I can so easily see. How can the others be so ignorant to their blank? Cast me aside, will they? I shall not waste my breath on the savages. The crystals of the earth have predicted before. I know these visions tell us secrets. Visions of the towering heart, the great one of all, shattered into seven dark and five light, the remnants of the stones laying the foundation for all this destruction, sets in action the endless and impossible task of restoring what was broken to perfect form. Once to the blank, one of the shattering pieces, neither light or shadow cut with the ability to create, while it is closely protected, no prison is eternal and soon is released by the burning red gem and the high white gem. The ability used to create a hidden and secret realm War explodes and the seven turn on each other. The three perfect, corrupted by the four flawless, a false break to gain access to the stones of the soul. One perfect shattered gem, one perfect corrupts from within, one perfect hidden deep. Visions of the Eternal. Terror unleashed into a child and held deep within the earth by its would-be attackers. Setting the gem within the new host, it drives east, east to be released by the other two dark stones. Vision of Grizzled Eyes. A former foe of one of the three, cast to nothing, returns to be imprisoned once more. Vision of Mad Ancient Lies. A shadow keeps moving, the shadow of a past light. Carrying with it the spark, evil brothers together, the dark gem, gem cut anew, only to return to world between realms. Two dark stones of soul shattered, one fled to be joined to the eye, the last perfect exiled. The eye corrupted beyond repair to be destroyed by one of the five light, reduced to shards. 
Visions of Life. Shards thrown to the far reaches, pieces that still hold echoes of their former power, sought by those who seek to claim or destroy. Vision of Swarms. Seek from the Five. One light gem begins its new path anew. An ancient black gem is discovered, a prison crafted larger than its kin. Its thirst, souls strong enough to gather five of the dark before they could return home. The sixth gem shone freely. Its fate to join its brothers and sisters. The seven stands at the base of the eyes of the end. Its armies defeated, follows at last. Filled the prison with nothing but darkness. The prison filled is given new life in the spawn of the stronger brother. Seven become one primal. In its blank sets out to shatter the throne of light. Breaking the perfection of one of the four remaining light and containing two to victory. So close only to fail and remain imprisoned. Once to a broken light stands in blank place of his lost brother, a brother who has taken a new visage. Vision of Eternal End A dark prison corrupts its resting place, stolen away by the broken light. A lost brother returns under a new name to claim it, leaving but a shard. A dark twisted a dark gem twisted to a new purpose takes strength from many to power a new master only to be shattered by the one it serves. Death of a former light, those imprisoned set free. Vision of the individual, a false gem attempts to capture a prime, fails and falls to a lesser host. Vision of night, the perfect return at last to finally claim their rightful throne among brothers. Vision of greatness, a lost, flawed gem returned at last, fallen, light returned to its former glory, a thief left alone to plan, eternal the seven and the five gripped from their homes, cursed to reside in a kingdom, blank hidden. A lost brother, a fallen guide, places traded, forever cursed. Now, um, if we take the first letter from every single vision of the we end up with the gem all-seeing, um, which is another puzzle within a puzzle. Um, at this point, we have successfully, basically, you know, completed the Ottendorf cipher. Uh, the Ottendorf cipher was to get this, and we don't necessarily know if there is more. Um, and we are definitely going to be digging deeper and deeper into this. I just felt like that you guys out there in the Diablo verse would like to know what has been going on, how we managed to arrive at the conclusions that we arrived at. And um, I'd also like to give some shout outs to all the people that uh, helped out during this. Uh, I honestly probably can't name you all. I'm really sorry. There's just so many. Uh, but if you take a look within the file, you will see that we literally have name after name after name in here. We got Shell Zeus, Al Bundy, Yatsen, Catharsis, Baggins, Hemless, Jamia, Procky. Um, even, believe it or not, even Mr. Llama came and donated some codes here and there. Uh, we had um, uh, a Neanderthal, um, I think Macro Bio Boy was in on it. Uh, we got Echo Hack, Third Gear, Kill Craze, Remix. Uh, Hyperion, quite a few of my own kinship members uh, stepped up and did a lot of work, uh, like Lemnist, Destination. Um, <laughs> God, like I honestly, I don't even think I can really name everybody. We got tons of codes donated from everybody, like Willard, um, Third Gear, uh, Ninth Legion, um, and um, you know, quite a few people came together to you know do some pretty amazing things like this excel spreadsheet was created so quickly i mean just so quickly and uh and through contribution of quite a few people we were able to turn this excel spreadsheet into a modeled mess that eventually resembled just the most amazing little creation which helped us order our thoughts 
um, much more easily so that we could figure out what the freaking hell was going on with all these numbers. Um, and before too long, we had the actual manual programmed in here line by line so that you could just simply type in the code and you could find out exactly what a particular code meant. Um, and then on top of that, we had the endless number of people farming codes, sending them to us on a regular basis. Um, as you can see, in many cases, we have one, two, three, four different confirmations for a specific code where we would have many people send in that same code, which believe it or not, the multiple codes helped. They helped a lot because they helped us to, to feel confident in the fact that the codes were correct uh, because we were getting them from multiple sources. So we didn't have to worry so much about um, getting incorrect codes. Now, what is the overall implication of this? Uh, what does the gem all seeing mean? What does the actual message mean? Let's go over this together because I'd like to talk about the, the actual message and, um, and, and basically kind of go over each individual story and, and talk about what those stories basically mean. Um, this is something that, um, that is pretty easy to do for someone who has spent a lot of time in the lore like I have. And uh, those of you who have spent time in the lore, feel free to correct me if I get anything wrong. I'm, uh, I'm never infallible. So let's start with the first verse, uh, which is, The stones have spoken to me again. This does not tell us anything super specific. It does talk about the savages, which if you check the manual, um, the manual actually refers to the savages as barbarians. So the barbarians are the savages, which makes sense because a lot of this revolves around the world stone and what was the world stone guarded by. It was guarded by the barbarians, who of course were the savages. Um, it seems to be told to us by a specific person. We don't know who this person is, um, but he refers to himself as I. He says, cast me aside. Um, you know, he is specifically saying um, and pointing out that, that basically he is a person. He is, he is someone specific who's telling this story. I would like to hear your thoughts on who you think is telling this story. Um, and um, I think it's important to know who is telling this story. Um, but he talks about visions, and he's basically saying that these visions are telling us secrets. Uh, the first vision is the vision of the Towering Heart. And uh, the vision of the Towering Heart is actually a pretty um, common story within the Diablo universe. Um, this is a story that I'm not sure if you've heard it or not. I'm going to paraphrase it. Um, basically, at one point or another, there was an all-powerful dragon, the Great One of All. The Great One of All was named Anu. Um, Anu uh, also goes by a couple other names. Um, but Anu wasn't happy with his evil side. He didn't like the fact that he was both good and evil, that he was everything. Um, so Anu shed his evil side. Um, the evil side turned into a great dragon named Tahamet. Uh, Tahamet was not happy with Anu. Um, he was evil, and of course they fought. Um, they fought until they both died. It, that's why it says here, once, uh, sorry, one of the shattered pieces, uh, let's see here, shattered into seven, dark, and five light. So shattered into seven, dark, and five light is referring specifically to the prime evils and the lesser evils. Um, you can count them up if you want. Um, and then also the five light refers to the angels. So the basically the world of Anu um, is the heavens. The world of darkness or the or hell is essentially the 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 seven that came from Tahamet. Uh, the body of Tahamet actually formed hell. That was uh, that was where hell came from. Um, so they're talking specifically about how everything came to be. Um, now, it says, neither light or shadow um, cut with the ability to create. One of the shattered pieces cut with the ability to create. I'm fairly certain this is they're talking about the world stone because the world stone actually came from a new. It is his eye, as far as, uh, as, far as we know. Um, it is actually referred to as the eye of a new. Um, and it, here it says, while it closely predicted, protected, no prison is eternal and soon is released by the burning red gem and the high white gem. Um, the ability used to create a secret realm. Um, war explodes and the seven turn on each other. The seven turning on each other is referring to the war between the prime evils and the lesser evils, um, where basically um, they fought within hell. And um, 
it's it's very interesting. Um, one perfect gem shattered is referring to the gem that it was used to contain Diablo. One perfect gem corrupts from within is talking about Talrasha's gem, which was embedded in his chest, which corrupted Talrasha from inside. Um, and one perfect hidden deep is referring to Mephisto's stole stone, which he hid underneath the Temple of Light, deep underneath the earth. Uh, vision of Eternal, of the Eternal. This is the second vision. Uh, the second vision is terror unleashed into a child and held deep within the earth. Now that can be nobody else but Diablo. Diablo was the one that in quote, that uh, attacked Leoric. Leoric was too strong for Diablo, and so Diablo was put into the young boy Albrecht, which was King Leoric's son. So that has to be uh, the verse about Diablo I and Di uh, Diablo basically being underneath of the cathedral. Um, as you can see, um, setting the gem within a new host, which is when the wanderer puts the he gem inside of his own head, it drives east, east to be released by the other two dark stones. So we definitely have the story of Diablo here, which is the vision of the eternal. Uh, the vision of the grizzled eyes is a former foe, one of the three, cast to nothing, returns to be imprisoned once more. Now, this could potentially be talking about Iswal. I'm not entirely sure. It's a very short verse with not a lot of, uh, of, of interesting information. Um, it could also technically be talking about Andariel. Um, Andariel was originally a foe of the three. Um, she was part of the lesser evils uh, that was at war with the prime evils and eventually she sided with them um, not entirely sure what this one is let me know what you guys think in the comments uh, vision of the mad of mad ancient lies a shadow keeps moving a shadow of a past light carrying within it the spark evil brothers together dark gem cut anew only to return to the world between realms two dark stones of soul shatter this is referring to the Mephisto's soul stone and the um, Diablo's soul stone shattered. They were, they were the ones that were shattered. Remember, we shattered, specifically, we shattered Mephisto's on the forge. And Diablo's was already shattered. And when we killed him, I'm pretty sure that it, like, disintegrated in our hands or something like that. I can't remember. Um, one fled to be joined to the eye. Now, the eye, as we were talking about earlier, is the eye of the Anu. Eye of Anu is, is what the World Stone is referred to by many of the ancients. Uh, the last perfect exiled, uh, that is, uh, the perfect seemed to be talking about the prime evils. So Baal was killed here. Um, the Eye is corrupted beyond repair. So this is talking about how Baal corrupted the World Stone and the World Stone could not be repaired. Uh, to be destroyed by one of the five light. One of the five light is referring to Tyrael. Uh, reduced to shards. So the world stone is essentially destroyed and turned into shards. Visions of life. Shards thrown to the far reaches, pieces that still hold echoes of their formal power sought by those who seek to claim or destroy. This could technically be talking about Diablo Immortal, for all we know, which goes through the process of trying to reclaim the shards and destroy them. Not entirely sure about that one. A uh, vision of swarms seek from the five. One light gem begins its new path. This could be referring to when Tyrael falls from heaven and becomes um, a human. Uh, it has to eat food and things like that. Uh, an ancient black gem is discovered. There is the black gems, the black soul stone that is uh, used in Diablo 3 lore. Um, a prison crafted larger than its kin. So this is basically talking about how the soul stone was strong enough to gather all of them in it, and not just a single one. Um, and it basically says soul strong enough to gather the f five of the dark before they could return home. Uh, the six Shem Joe shown freely. And so this is going over the story of basically how they harvested all the souls of the, um, the prime and lesser evils, basically all of them inside the stone. And so at the end there, it actually talks about how the seven are one. Um, and uh, the seven are one is basically referring to the fact that he kind of just like re-put Tahamet back together, so to speak, like within one soul stone. Uh, filled the prison with nothing but darkness. The prison filled is given new life and spawned of the stronger brother. So basically the seven become one primal so the uh diablo this is talking about how diablo basically used the power of all of his brothers to uh 
to essentially become even more powerful than he was before. Uh, he sets out to destroy the throne, shatter the throne of light. That's talking about when Diablo charges heaven and destroys the, basically destroys heaven. Um, breaking the perfection of one of the four remaining light and containing two to victory. So this is talking about how Diablo, um, you know, beat the angels, so to speak. Um, so close only to fail and remained in prison once to, once to a broken light stands, uh, place of his brother lost a brother who has taken a new visage. So obviously he fails at the end of this, um, which this, this vision of swarms really seems to be like Diablo three, a uh, vision of the eternal end, a dark prison corrupts its resting place stolen away by the broken light. A lost brother returns under a new name to claim it, leaving but a shard, a dark twisted, a gem twisted to a new purpose, takes strength from many to power a new master, only to be shattered by the one it serves. The death of a former light attempts to capture a prime, fails, and falls to a lesser host. Not exactly sure what this particular one is referring to either. Uh, Vision of the Night. The perfect return at last to finally claim their rightful throne among brothers. Now, the perfect is always referring to the primevals. Every single time that they've used the word perfect, it has been in combination of the primevals. So, uh, so keep that in mind. Um, so what are they coming back for? They've claimed their throne among their brothers. So among their brothers would refer to a, a primeval coming back and basically joining rejoining the the um the primes the prime uh, the, the prime evils uh, and then we have the vision of greatness at the end here which is a lost flawed gem i know you guys can't see it because i need to scroll up um, a lost flawed gem returned at last this is a very interesting line because what is the lost flawed gem within this story we have already had explained every single gem that we know of including the black soul stone so what is the lost fall flawed gem uh, blank fallen light returned to its former glory this is referring to an angel that returns to its former glory could be Malthiel, could be Tyriel becoming an angel again we're not sure um, a thief left alone to plan Eter eternal the seven and five gripped from their homes so this is talking about the seven, the prime evils and the lesser evils, and the five angels um, basically taken from their homes um, as if their homes are no longer available to them or gone, or maybe they were kidnapped, who knows. Uh, what could be powerful enough to remove the angels and demons from their homes? Uh, cursed to reside in a kingdom blank hidden, which we don't have the uh, translation for yet, um, a lost brother, a fallen guide, places traded forever cursed. Now, this is actually rather interesting because, quite honestly, oops, I didn't do that. Uh, because this vision of greatness seems to be referring to something that we don't know yet. Um, if anyone has any ideas on this one, please be sure to post them down in the comments. Now, what does the gem all seeing mean? This is probably the end result of all of our troubles. And, um, Hmm. At this point, I think we can only sort of hypothesize. What does the gem all seeing mean? It could be referring to the chat gem, obviously. But why would they go through all this trouble to hide a message specifically about the very thing that we use to get this message? Um, the gem is all seeing, but what does that uh, what does that mean? I want all you guys and gals out there to uh, to put down in the comments what you think the gem all seeing could possibly mean. Could it be um, in reference to some sort of recipe within the game? Could it be a hint to uh, something that is new to come? Could this potentially be an old puzzle that we just never solved? Um, the fact that we had codes that were coming out 12 months ago um, is kind of insane, especially when you consider the fact that, um, you know, this has basically been in the game for a year. And has it been in the game longer than that? Um, we don't necessarily know if this was in the game for a very long time or if this was in the game only just recently. Um, there are posts specifically by David Brevik where he basically goes over the fact that uh, he's worried that the chat gem code may have been altered or changed. Um, in fact, uh, if you want to search for those, um, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to find them relatively easily. 
And um, there are also other comments where he talks about the fact that the chat gem code was made by his wife. And anytime anyone asks him, he tells them that he's not going to tell them anything uh, because it was his wife's project, not his. And he's not going to uh, spoil what she designed. And, uh, and I think that is uh, a very admirable trait. Uh, anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. Uh, this video has already gone a lot longer than I think I intended. And um, I don't think this is over. I think we've still got a little bit more to decipher. But I wanted to give you guys an update instead of forcing you to watch those ridiculously long videos. I mean, I stream for probably like 30 hours. And uh, I'm not going to make you guys watch all 30 hours just to find out the solution to what we came up with. Um, so as always, thanks for watching. And uh, if you want to keep watching, be sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, share the video. All of it really helps. And, uh, and I couldn't do any of this without you guys anyway.